Here are three little problems dealing with some simple number triangles, and we'll just have to know a little bit of number theory to figure these questions out. This is the problem in the thumbnail. You can skip straight to it with the video chapters, but we're going to do these two first. Let's start with the green one. So here in each row, the numbers, of course, are just counting up by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. And also the length of each row is increasing by one. This row has length one, this row has length two, this row has length three, and so on. We're asked to find the first number in the 100th row. We have to notice that the number at the end of each row is simply the number of numbers that have occurred up to that point, since the numbers start at one and are counting up by one. For example, at the end of the fourth row, 10 numbers have occurred, which is why the last number there is 10. Now, the handy thing is, we can count how many numbers have occurred up to the end of a certain row by simply adding up the lengths of the rows up to that point. So, to find what the number is at the end of the fourth row, we could just add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, the length of the first row plus the length of the second plus the length of the third, and so on. You see, that's easy equal to 10. So how do we find the first number in row 100? Well, we'll figure out what the last number is in row 99, and then just add one to that. Just continuing with this example, this gave us the number at the end of row four. If we wanted the number at the end of row five, we would just add five, the length of the next row, to the end of this sum, telling us that 15 is the number at the end of row five. So to get the number at the end of row 99, well, we have a lot of addition to do. We need to do one plus two, two plus three all the way up to plus 98 and finally plus 99 adding up the lengths of all rows up to the 99th row to calculate that last number but this is a sum of consecutive integers and there is a famous or well-known formula for that you may recall this formula from the legendary story of gauss figuring it out in his classroom as a little kid when in the story it said an evil teacher asked everybody to uh, add up the numbers 1 through 100 just to kind of kill time and Carl Friedrich Gauss figured it out like a champion in mere seconds using this strategy. We write this lengthy sum again below itself but reversing order. By reversing order we can easily see that pairs of numbers add up to a very nice thing indeed. Every pair of numbers here is equal to 100. How many pairs do we have? Well, from 1 up to 99, that's a total of 99 pairs. Now, of course, we only want to calculate this top sum by doubling it. You know, we've repeated it here. We've doubled the amount we want. So to just correct this count, we need to multiply it by one half. And this is pretty straightforward arithmetic to do. 99 times 100 is 9,900. And then to multiply that by one half, well, half of 9,000 is 4,500, and half of 900 is 450. Add those things together, and we get 4,950. That's this sum, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up through 99. And so this is the number at the end of row 99. So what's the first number in row 100? Well, it would be the number at the end of row 99 plus 1. So the answer is 4,951. Pretty cute little problem. All right, here is our second problem. We're given this number triangle where each row is doubling in length. This row has length one, then length two, then length four, then length eight, and so on. Still, the numbers are just counting up by one. And we're asked, what's the last number in row 10? Well, we need to see the powers of two here. Notice that in row one, the first number, and in that case, the only number, is two to the power of zero. And considering that's row one, we could also write it as two to the power of the row number, minus one. If we look at the next row, row two, that first number is two to the power of the row number, which is two minus one. And of course, that's just two. That's the first number. If we look at row four, for example, the first number, 8 is 2 to the power of the row number, 
minus one, so two to the power of three, which of course is eight. Since we see how to calculate the first number in each row using powers of two, to find the last number in row 10, let's look at the first number in row 11, which would be two to the 11 minus one, and then to get to the last number of row 10, we would just have to subtract one from that number. Just like if we do two to the four minus one and subtract one from that, that would get us from the first number of row four back to the last number of row three. So to get that last number of row 10, we're going to calculate the first number of row 11 and then subtract one. Now, of course, two to the 11 minus one is two to the 10. So we have two to the 10 and we need to subtract one from that. If you don't know two to the 10 offhand, it's pretty easy to just double numbers until you figure it out. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. Go on until you get to two to the power of 10. Turns out it's 1,024 and we're subtracting one from that. So our final answer, the last number in row 10 is 1,023 and I'll also write that over here. All right, there's our answer. Let's move on to our final problem. So in this problem, we have a number triangle where the length of each row is increasing by two. This first row has length one, the next row has length three, the next row has length five, and so on. So the lengths of the rows are all odd numbers. And we're asked, what's the first number in row 1000? Well, to figure out what the last number in each row is, we would just have to add the number of numbers that have occurred up to that point. So for example, one, two, three, four total numbers have occurred to get us to this four at the end of row two. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers total have occurred by the time we get to the end of row three. So to figure out the numbers at the end of the rows, all we have to do is add up the lengths of the rows. The lengths of the first four rows are one plus three plus five plus seven, which gives us that number at the end of the fourth row, 16. Now, of course, because the lengths of the rows are odd, we're adding up odd numbers when we add up row lengths. And you may notice that the numbers at the end of the rows are squares, and perhaps that result is familiar to you. When we add consecutive odds from one onwards, the sums are squares because of this you know, beautiful property here. There's one, I'm just representing odds with dots, and there's, ooh, there's one plus three, that's a square, that's four. What if we add the next odd number, five? Well, we get another square, it's a three by three square. Look at that, it's beautiful. So since adding odds together produces these squares, we know that the rows will end in squares. And so to find the first number of row 1000, we'll look at the last number of row 999 and then add one to that. So how do we find the last number of row 999? Well, we know that it's going to be 999 squared. The end of row one is one squared. The end of row two is two squared. The end of row three is three squared because of this relationship between adding odds and the square numbers. So the end of row 999 is 999 squared. And thankfully, squaring that is a piece of cake. To do this squaring easily, think about it as a difference of squares. We can do 999 plus one, multiplied by 999 minus one. This is just going to give us 999 squared, but it's also going to give us a minus one, which we don't want. So we would just have to add one to this to correct our calculation. This multiplication is a breeze because it's 999 plus one, which is a thousand times 999 minus one, which is 998. So we have 1000 times 998. So 998, whoops, let me try that again. 998,000 minus, or excuse me, plus one at the end. So that is 998,001. That's the last number at the end of row 999. So we need to add one to that to get the first number in row 1000. So our final answer then will be 998,002. And there you go. Those are three fun little number theory, number triangle problems to start your Sunday morning. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest 
biased math videos on the internet.